you and I have very different usage patterns. The way you drive is different from me. The way you charge, most importantly, is very different from me. Hey guys, Kim Java here. I get a lot of questions from people, why Tesla? And how can I manage an all electric household and not have a single gas car in our garage? It's not range that I bring up, not autopilot, not even performance or the safety features, but it's one simple fact that I always circle back to and that is the Tesla supercharger network. So in my eyes, it's by far the biggest competitive advantage and that's why we've owned three Teslas and have three more on reservation right now. There's really nowhere you can't go with a Tesla in the US. In fact, that's exactly what I asked Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe a few years ago at a private event. There's been a lot of questions on this. We haven't announced our charging network. When you think about charging, so today there's 164,000 gas stations in the United States. There's under a thousand Tesla supercharger stations. So we're at the very beginning of a big transition towards a charging infrastructure. Are there any partnerships that you guys have already started to form with that that you can tell us? Nothing that we've announced yet. Nothing that you've announced yet. So there definitely is in the works though. Yeah. Definitely in the works. So he wasn't ready to spill the beans about Rivian's charger network back then, but he definitely had plenty to say about it this week as Rivian announced huge news about their charging network. First, we know they're rolling out their own ultra fast charging network called the Adventure Network. Sure, it's not as catchy a name as Tesla's network and maybe telling someone you have 10 minutes of adventuring left before you get to 90% doesn't roll off the tongue, but wait until you hear what Rivian has planned. Instead of partnering with third parties like Electrify America or EVgo, similar to what Audi or Porsche are doing, Rivian is following in Tesla's footsteps by offering its own charging network for its R1T and R1S customers. So RJ had kind of hinted at that with me, but we know now that they're hiring people who also worked on Tesla's supercharging network to build the Rivian network, and they've got a lot of cash on hand to make it happen thanks to their big name backers like Amazon and T. Rowe Price. In January, we learned that Rivian had raised over six billion dollars in funding, which they're using to in part build out an impressive charging network. And this week they shared with us just how impressive it's going to be. They're rolling out 3,500 ultra fast DC chargers for Rivian customers only and calling it the Adventure Network. You'll find them all across the US and parts of Canada at over 600 different locations and all of this in the next two years. To put that into perspective, it took Tesla about four years after the Model S rolled out to have that many stations. So we're talking mid 2016. Now here's where it gets saucy. Rivian says this charging infrastructure will also be powered by 100% renewable energy, making Rivian's SUV and truck one of the most sustainable during its life cycle. The ability to take batteries, put them initially into a vehicle, but then plan for and design for those batteries at their end of vehicle life to connect them to a second life in various types of grid storage. To do that, you have to design the battery from the very beginning, such that the transition from a car to the grid is really easy. Rivian says they've lined up electricity providers and plan to use wind and solar energy to keep the infrastructure running. And where that's not possible, they've lined up renewable energy certificates to ensure the car is powered by clean energy. So if you guys are like me and you are an OG Tesla fan, you might remember that back in September of 2012, Tesla unveiled its supercharger network and in their presser, they said the chargers would be powered by the sun and free to its customers indefinitely. Something that's unique about the supercharger is that it's free. It's not just free now, it's free forever. Of course, we know that a ton has changed since then and Elon, as of four years ago, reiterated that they do still plan to disconnect almost all superchargers from the grid in the coming years. So it definitely will be interesting to see Rivian try to do this from the outset. So these Rivian charging stations will also pack a good punch. They'll have peak charging rates at 200 kilowatts, saying you'll net 140 miles of range in 20 minutes. There's also talks that 300 kilowatt chargers are in development as well. Of course, Tesla's latest V3 chargers pack 250 kilowatts of power, so it is pretty competitive. Wow, 180. 180. Yes, 190. Yeah. 200. Thousand miles per hour, 250 kilowatts. Okay, so get this. Rivian is rolling out the Adventure Network, which mirrors Tesla's supercharger network 
but that is not all. They have also announced that they're building 10,000 so-called waypoint chargers at shops, restaurants, hotels, and parks. That will mirror Tesla's destination charger network. The Rivian network is clearly being built for Rivian customers, but it doesn't mean that this will be a Rivian only system like Tesla's supercharging network. Rivian uses what's called the Combined Charging System or CCS. It's become the international standard and more people in Europe and now North America are finding on their new EVs. So basically Rivian trucks and SUVs can also use any third party CCS station like Electrify America without having to use an adapter. And theoretically other EVs like Porsche Taycan, which also use the CCS could end up using Rivian's network but software could block them if Rivian wanted to. And it sounds like that is the route that Rivian is taking according to the presser. Quote, these DC fast chargers will be for Rivian owners only with details on pricing and associated programs coming soon. All right, guys, I just wanted to take a moment here to thank the supply company for supporting this channel. They've got a product that people call the Tesla, or maybe now they'll call it the Rivian of razor blades because it's sleek, minimal, and extremely efficient. The fully metallic single blade reduces your risk for irritation and bumps and saves you a ton over those old disposable multi-blades. A three month supply of blades costs you only $6 and they're 100% recyclable. I'll link them in the description below and be sure to enter the code KIMJAVA for 15% off. So something else that I found interesting is that much like Tesla's in-house approach with everything they build and manufacture, Rivian CEO RJ Scrinch recently said that his adventure charging network was also all developed in-house, saying, we haven't talked about this really, but the charger, the power electronic module is something we've developed in-house and we'll be deploying it at scale. We'll have chargers for commercial vans for Amazon and consumer facing adventure network ones for Rivian customers. So to me, a reliable, easy to use public charging network means no buttons to press or cars to swipe so people can't break it. And that is going to be the key to trusting a charging infrastructure. Tesla has gained owner's trust because it's simple, fast, and almost always works for you as expected. And I can't really say that about most public charging stations. So seeing Rivian have their own network makes me feel like they'll probably have a better customer experience. Legacy automakers, on the other hand, have created partnerships and even made strategic investments in these businesses ahead of their own EV rollouts. RJ Scringe made a great point in a recent interview saying, the challenge is we don't control these networks. So the payment platforms, the uptime, the performance, the ability to reserve a charger, all those things that take the friction of charging away, we don't truly control. With the Rivian network, we have 100% control of that. We get to know what vehicles are charging or how they're charging the rates. We can be really creative in terms of locations so it can allow us to get to places that are very specific and unique to Rivian. So I think this specific part of EV ownership that Rivian seems to get is super critical and I'm really excited about it. At the Rivian event that we attended back in 2019, the whole adventure theme was pretty clear. I mentioned in that video that the whole experience felt like going to an REI store and getting ready for a a camping trip, which I find pretty cool, especially since I grew up in the Seattle area and I drove plenty of Subarus in the Northwest, which kind of has that same sort of outdoor vibe. In fact, in their presser, Rivian went on to say that their waypoint chargers will be located at trailheads, campsites, as well as they are being installed at all 42 Colorado state parks starting this July, which is something I have always wanted Tesla to do. So I'm really curious what you guys think about the Rivian news, their approach to charging, and the company's potential once the R1T and R1S roll out this summer. Let me know below. Um, and by the way, if you haven't had a chance to check out our EV and Tesla inspired shop, it's kimjava.com. We've got shirts for the whole family, Tesla cookie cutters, plug and play USBs and more. Thanks again for watching and we will catch you guys next time. Mid 2016. Now, of course, we know a ton has changed since then. And Elon, 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 I do like that name. That's a cute name. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Charger stations will also pack a good punch. They'll have. <coughs> can, can I just do it from there? Sorry. <coughs> oh.
<coughs> you know, that COVID. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm vaccinated, people. I was holding back that cough, actually, and really trying hard. Rivian CEO RJ Scrinch recently, recently, recent, like, it's been sure. So fast and almost always works as expected. Expected. Expected? Let me just say that. I get to it first, I got you mad. I guess that when I get to it last. Get it that I'm never going back. Get it that I'm never going back. I get to it first, I got you